G'day viewers, thought I'd show you an easy way to remember the power triangle. So the power triangle is drawn basically the same configuration in every textbook. So we've got one of these sides, as you can remember, is going to be the apparent power. One of them is going to be the true power. And the other one is going to be the power that is in our reactive components, the inductors and capacitors. Okay, first off, the apparent power is apparently what we've got. So that is the supply power. As you can imagine, the power that is supplied, which is VA, so it's simply volts and current, is all that apparent power is. And so as you can imagine, if that's our supply, that's going to be the most. That's going to be the longest side of the triangle. So that's this one here, and that's VA. And think of VA for apparent power. Okay. And so our true power is obviously going to be less because we've got losses. And the true power you're going to find at the bottom of your triangle. So think of for the truth, you've got to dig for it. You've got to get to the bottom of the matter. The truth is always going to be at the bottom. So this here is true power. And that, of course, is watts. And so this here, that's our supply. This is power. That's measured in watts. That's VA. The difference between VA, which is the volts and amps that is supplied to it, the difference between VA and watts is this angle here. As you can imagine, if that angle was zero, then that supply power would be down here with the true power. So what makes this different is this angle here. And that angle is our power factor. That's your cos theta. And you might remember in your formula is that power equals VI. Remember that from first year? But then in second year, when you got into AC power instead of DC, and you also had theta there. So it was voltage times current times theta gave us power, which is true power. Okay, on this side, this here is your reactive component. That's what's left. So this is your vase. So think of VAR. Vars for reactive component. That's your reactive power. And if you like, think of that as quality. The larger that line there, then the less quality of the circuit. Okay, what does that mean? Well, if you can imagine, like if this here is a 200 kVA generator or transformer so we've got 200 kva but it's not giving us 200 kilowatts because of the power that's used up in a reactive component which is your inductor which is what's building the magnetic field in the machine if we were able to reduce the amount of power used in a reactive component we'd be able to bring that down and so our 200 kVA would provide more power down here. So let's imagine, say, that this is probably providing 150 kilowatt. Okay, our transformer, let's say we, let's say it's rated to 200 kVA. So if we were to say there's 200 kVA and it'll come down here, there is 200 kVA there, 
but then also if we were to lift that up then 200 kVA let's say a, a very horrible angle huge angle here took it up to there that is still 200 kVA there but because of the amount of power used up in a reactive component when now down it's almost nothing okay so as you can imagine 200 kVA is not going to give us very much in power on the other hand if we were to reduce that angle and bring it down to say there we might be able to do 180 190 kilowatts but if we don't need it let's say we only need the 150 so the benefit that it creates for us is we don't have to run the machine at 200 kVA so all we need is 150 so it's only going to use that amount of volts and current obviously same volts so the current's going to be reduced current reduced and the cable has less heat in it there's less stress on the cable less stress on the boards less stress on the equipment so if we can keep our power factor down to a decent angle well then everything's going to run cooler all right don't have much time in a five minute video of course but i hope it helps see you tomorrow